right, guys. Just a couple of minutes till starting here. So um, we've got, I'm working on quite a few things today. Uh, so we'll just have to see what happens. Minutes to go. Let's see here. Gathering. The first thing I'm going to talk about is this piece. So, in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and start, you know, because people will be drifting in. Anyway, I'll show the, you. This is what we, I've been working on. I'm going to show you to show it to you piece by piece here. This is the background that I created with the molding paste pressed through the window screen. I used watercolor to uh, color it, orange to begin with, and then I used some of the hot pink primary elements on there, and then I came back in and I dry brushed some of the golden, uh, what is it, the iridescent gold over the top of it. So since that's gone over the top of it, it's pretty much permanent now. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I will attach this. Once I get my frames in, I've got frames ordered and they're really deep ones, floater frames, so I can put the stuff in. So I'm probably going to attach this maybe to a piece of balsa wood. And this is a 10 by 10, 10 by 10 piece of balsa wood. Just adhere this to it and that's my backup and then I'll start stacking from there. I'll adhere each layer to the next layer. Now I have gone ahead and I have varnished the pieces because I had so much stuff on there to begin with it was just easier to go ahead and varnish so nothing would be disturbed here so this one is actually this piece is a little more um, colorful than the one I did last week the first one I did this one has more of a combination of colors going on and every piece is going to be different I never know how they're going to turn out since I never have a plan um, it's always just uh, get yeah, wait and see. So that's done there. And here is the top, the top layer here. And I will probably put it on like this. And I have varnished this one. I did add a little more of the um, pink in here. And I found a darker teal that I added around here. Really accentuated the cracks going on. Um, I also put the varnish on this um, cheesecloth just to make it a little stiffer. This is not completely, totally 100% dry. I just did it about an hour or two ago. It's dry to the touch, but it still needs to cure a bit. When this is done, when I've got them, when they're completely dry, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do some uh, accenting with my metallic lusters. And Sandra Duran Wilson turned me on to these, and they're awesome. You can, they're the, the luster wax stuff that you can find many brands for, but I'm just, I just use the heck out of it. And it dries out pretty quickly, but when I use it, I just squirt it with water and then just rub my finger in there and rub on, rub off. I could also get pretty much the same effect by dry brushing gold or copper on there. So since this is not wholly dry yet, I will leave that till later. Which brings us to the second piece that I think is almost complete here. It has not been varnished. I've not done anything with it yet. So that's going to deepen these colors a bit. But I, I really like the way this is looking. So I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add just a little bit more around these dots here. So... Always the question is, what is the color that I'm going to use? That's always the challenge with me. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I'll use some of that. No, I'm going to get. I'm going to use a darker, a darker purple here. This is called Passion. And again, it is a primary element from Color Art.
do love that color. And as you see, these little little balls come out. I just, I actually have a little bow there, and I just throw them in the bowl because, you know, those things that they add up and they get, they can be expensive. So it's just easier for me to throw them in that bowl, and then I can just uh, pour them over the next piece. Okay, let's see how this looks. That's pretty cool. Painting around the sides here that kind of accentuates those openings a bit. And of course, when this one is done, I will do exactly the same thing as I did on the larger one. I will go back and I will touch up, make some things pop by adding the gold or the copper or both. Okay. Maybe I'll use something different over there. Let's see here. How about... Through here. Let's see. How about this? Is a this is called what is this? Bolivian blue. But I'm actually thinking a lighter one. So I think I'll try with this cool water. I have no idea because they aren't necessarily the exact color they are as a powder when you put them on. So I'm trying to keep this one from becoming as dark as that last piece is. So I'm making some different choices here. If I don't like them, I can go back and I can add a darker over it. And I do like that. I can bring it in over here as well. Sinking into the crackles there. And overlapping into the pink. You brush it back here, you can see all the, the colors that it creates. And when I varnish this, those little balls will be nailed down on there. They won't be going anywhere. But I've done so much with the water now, I really have to be aware of what I'm doing and careful that I don't lose all that. Okay, maybe I'll come right here on the edge of this and put just a little bit there on the edge to kind of pick up what I've got going on in two other places there. Okay, I like that. You never know. Ball that has escaped. Just get over there. Like that. Okay, cool. When I get these ready to put in the frames, I will paint around the edges of all, all the layers black because the floater frames are black and that just gives it a more cohesive look there, I think. Okay, put that aside. Maybe I'll come back in here with a little bit of that blue. Let's see. And if I don't like it, I just pull it back off again with the paper towel. That's kind of neat. It's just a touch of it. Maybe I'll put a tatty bit up here. Yeah. There we go. Okay, I like that. Kind of brightened it up a bit. Dry this off. Okay, a 
thought I had with this set that I'm working on right now was the background. And so I've pulled a couple of things out that are totally different. And again, I would adhere these to the uh, balsa wood that I'm going to use as a back panel. Now I could have, I could have used a gesso board or something to that effect on the back and done the um, alcohol links on it, but I'm kind of staying away from that for the simple reason that, you know, you're just not seeing that much of it after these are finished and that's just more busyness. If I put something solid or more solid in the background, then I have uh, a little place for the eye to, to rest back there. So these are some options. This is just cardboard from packing. Which I really like the way that looks. That really earthy, organic look of the cardboard back there is such a contrast to the, to the colors and shapes that are going on in the first two layers. However, I also like this. This is just a piece of lace fabric that I painted. I have uh, bins full of fabric. Uh, I don't use all of them. I, every now and then I go digging through them and pull out a piece I'm gonna use, but uh, they usually start out white or beige, and then I can paint. So this is an option. I'm gonna put this underneath it, so as you can see it. Then you've got that hot pink back there, and I would probably have a white behind there, I think, to make it pop more. That. Nice to have a roll of paper towels there. We'll try that. That way you can see better what it, what it might look like, as can I. Okay, so if it's a white background, and I put that pink in there. That's a whole nother look there whole nother look going on and I love them both so I'm not really sure which I would use but I've got lots of these canvases and I'm going to be making this is the start of a whole new series so um, if I whatever one I don't use with this I'll use for another one so I haven't made that decision yet so I'll put those out there to dry okay and here's the one we started gessoing yesterday. It's dry now. Let's see, Kathy, hey there. Jenny, Maria, hey there. That's all right, Maria. She says she's running a little weight. That's not a problem. I was always a few minutes early because that's just what I do. Okay, let's see here. This is dried. So I don't think this gesso, and it's got, since it's got paint on top of it, I don't think it's going to reactivate that gesso, but you never know. So at this point, this is a really absorbent canvas here. It's a very flat finish. It's not a glossy. I haven't put any gel medium or anything on here. So it's just perfect to absorb whatever I want it to absorb. Ah. So when in doubt... Get out the trusty color wheel. So I basically got orange, red violet, and red orange here. Hmm. I could go with the green, which would make it a um, complimentary. Or I could just skip around here and go red orange, red violet, blue violet, which appeals more to me. I could go analogous, which means they're in a row, and I've got red-orange. I could throw red in here and do it that way. So there's lots of different options. Um, Complementary, I've already got a split. I could go, I could go, let's see, the complement of red-violet is yellow-green. The complement of red orange is blue green. I could even do a split complementary or a double complementary color scheme there. So that there is all the things I can do. Normally, I don't look at this a whole lot because it, I trust my eye to figure out the colors I want together. And after I've looked at it, I find, oh, okay, it fit into that color scheme. But um, if I do get stuck, I always have my color wheel to fall back on. This is well used. I keep it out here in the studio and uh, always as a fallback measure here. So 
I'm thinking that that double complementary was was kind of intriguing. So you've got blue green and yellow green, but I'm wondering if that's just not going to be too much. So maybe I could go, I could go blue violet, red violet, red orange, or red violet, red, red orange. Uh, and I think you know which one I'm going to choose because. Blue violet is probably one of my favorite colors, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my blue violet out of my watercolor here, and I'm gonna put it, I think, uh, right on the edges, right in here. I may even go around and and you know I may add something. Oh, I'm sure I will add more things to that, but let's see where this goes first. Live dangerously, people. Just do it. You can always gesso over it if, it, if you screw it up. Who cares? Mm -hmm. I'm about to put more water on that, which means this will dissipate out into the wick out into the other colors here. So let's just see what that does before I go any further. Got some spots of it there, which is fine. Okay. I really, I love that over here. That's really looking. It's, it's that whole thing with the little balls. I love the way the dark colors go in there and they accentuate the little spaces in between. So I really like that. Had a um, a challenge finding a blue violet that I really love in in a, in an acrylic paint because I love this this watercolor but I cannot find the same color in an acrylic so I have I found that the colors I could use are let's see. Mm. It's the anthraquinone, I can't say it, anthraquinone blue and the permanent violet dark. If I mix those two together in certain quantities, I can get something that I really, that I really like. So, we'll see. I hope those texts aren't coming through. I had, I had things blocked, but apparently it didn't block the text. It's just blocking the calls. So, that would be my mother and my daughter chatting. So, just excuse them as they... Babylon in the background. Okay, I love the way this is interacting in here. I want some more here. I meant to do inside there, but <laughs> whoopsie. So much for that. Hmm. Obviously, this is getting really saturated, so I'll have to stop in a minute because I don't want it to start pulling paint off again. Mm -hmm. Just for grins and giggles, what about over here? I'll just put it right on that ridge to see what happens. I'll put it on both of those ridges. Be a lot easier if I just poured the paint into a, a small container, but I start doing things and I just don't want to, I don't have the patience to wait. So I just start in. 
I want to see what's going to happen. Okay, this is starting again to interact with this gesso here. So I'm not going to be able to work this just a whole lot. Nor do I know that I particularly like that or not. So I may dab some. Bring it down into here a little bit. I think I'll like that better. That's too much. But I have paper towels, so I'll simply dab on, dab on. When I was first art, first starting to art, I I never realized that you know I thought okay you just have to keep adding paint or you can't take it back off again you just got to keep adding until you fix it. I didn't realize that I had the freedom to to both add it and remove it if I wanted to. That that it's up to me. That choice is mine to make. I you know the whole thing about being a former musician and not having any art training whatsoever is that I never learned the rules. I never learned those things they teach you in art school because I just never, I learned music instead. Um, so that has been a hindrance at some points, you know, when I didn't know things that are probably really obvious and blatant to trained artists, but at the same time, uh, I have no rules, so I do what the heck I want now, and, and it's okay because I didn't know any better. So. Okay, that's going to have to dry. I love the way this green is coming through here, so I, I'm thinking I may come in. That blue-green may be something I add in there. We'll see. Okay, I've got a few other things that are in the works here. As you know, I've, I do everything in layers and they dry, so I'm going to pull out some other stuff here. These are two pieces that I am redoing. They were originally landscapes, which I absolutely loved the background on this, but you know, they didn't sell, and so I decided to do my thing. And I'm contemplating, do I or do I not put the crystal on there? It's not adhered yet. Uh, I don't have to put it on there. Obviously, I haven't finished painting the flowers. They've got a long way to go. But all right now, I'm just trying to make a decision on that crystal. And this one, this was meant as uh, to display on the diagonal as a landscape. And I've got the, it's got this little bits of purple in here, which are just beautiful. And I thought, okay, what about pulling some amethyst in there? Uh, I'm not sure about that either. And a different thing that I did on these flowers that I'll share with you is, find it. One thing you can do is get that netting that you get, like your uh, clementine oranges or potatoes, whatever, vegetables and fruits in at the grocery store. And what I do is, um, when I get it, I get my metallic, my liquid metal by Sargent. Um, not very expensive. I just get it on Amazon. And I get my gloves on, and I get some of that in my hands, and then I just squish up my netting. And that gives it a coating of the paints. And then I put them in my stash, and when I'm ready to use them, I've got them to pull out. So what I did was I just cut some pieces in circles and put those down there, and then adhered my top part of the flower over that so everything's glued down. The, the flowers are in their permanent locations. So I don't have to worry with that. So I tell you what, I'd appreciate a vote out there if you guys give me some feedback on the amethyst and the crystal. 
Yes or no? Should I keep it? Should I take it off? And I've got another piece here. This piece, I was getting just, just slap happy, cutting out things and this big glob of fabric on there. And uh, it's, it's really dark, um, which is not to say it's bad, it's just really dark. Um, so I've decided to embrace that with flowers that are that bluish. That Actually, this is the Bolivian blue I pulled out a while ago that I didn't end up using. Um, a little of that and arrange those on here. So I'm thinking about that and um, it's all, this hasn't been varnished yet. Actually, I did use some, um, I used some Powertex on this. I was just experimenting. All I have of the Powertex is the, the, um, the medium that you just use to make your fabric hard. So I just tried and it is really hard and it's still absorbent here. I have used the primary elements on here and they soaked in. I'm probably going to need to varnish it or take it outside and spray it with spray varnish and see what happens there. And then I've only put like one coat of you know, some of the primary elements here. This is a paper. I love that. It's called, there's a website that I use. It's called Mulberry Paper and More. And oh my God, they've got the most incredible papers ever. And I order from them quite a lot. And this is one of them. It started out, it's just an off-white. And it is paper. It looks like fabric, but it's not. It's a paper. So I actually put that on here first. And then I put down crackle paste. And then I came back using that stuff uh, that Maria told us about with the molding paste with, and I used the almond flour, which is, gives it that little texture here. It almost looks like little beads in it. So that's all dry now. So I can mess with that. And then I had this, this just a piece of balsa board and I had, I was experimenting with some bathroom treatments which is a whole nother story. But I had some papers on here. I didn't like it, so I thought, oh, I'll just paint them all silver. So I painted them all silver, and I didn't like that either. So then I took uh, tissue paper, and I just put tissue paper over it. And I thought, well, that might kind of be a nice background there. I don't have a lot invested in it monetarily. So this might be a good place where I could... Uh, come back and I could use a contrasting color for this. And I'm not sure how contrasting I want to be, but look at that. That looks kind of cool in there too. That may be someday a possibility. I've got a whole bin here, I'll show you in a second, of, of fabrics and stuff, my, my stash box that I keep out here. Um, so what color, the big question in here is, what color to do this? Now, I could make it, I could do the, okay, how about, put up gold? Mm -hmm. Or, huh. let's see here. I've got this, that's pretty. This is Lumiere, is the pearlescent turquoise. Um, hey, I'm going to try it. I'm going to wipe some on, and then um, may need to wipe it off. So we'll see. See what happens. Okay. I'm just going to lightly spritz water on there. I don't want it sopping. So I don't want my paint to beat up. I just want it, I want my paint to be able to move around a little bit. Oh, well, isn't that nice? So, okay, I can already tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint this solid, this Lumiere pearlescent turquoise. And then I'm going to come back in with maybe, who knows, maybe a pearl, a purple or something, and pick up the high points of these textures. Oh, that's a beautiful color. I do love Lumiere. 
And you know, they can be used on fabric as well as anything else. They're just a great paint. They aren't, they aren't cheap. They have little sampler packets that you can, you can get just to see if you're gonna like them or not, which is what I started with. And now I buy the bigger containers. I have found there are certain colors that I love more than others. And I'll show those to you too in a second. Okay. So that is, that's that. Wiping off my brush here. Put it aside and I'm gonna let that dry. Um, let me find the colors that I like the most, that I use the most. I use, I use this turquoise. This is almost pretty empty here. Um, this is my all-time favorite. This is called Halo Pink Gold. It is freaking awesome. I love this. It has a, a pink cast to it, but it's a gold. In fact, I may use this on some of the pieces that I'm ready to do, like touch up stuff on the, on the edges of it for. Um, I use that. I love that color. I love the turquoise. This is an indigo, which I also love. It's that deep blue, it's beautiful. And I use this one a lot. This is Halo Blue Gold. You can barely see down in there. It's just beautiful. Um, I've got more paints, but of those, of the ones I have, those are the three that I use a lot. I'm going to show you, get this out of the way, I'm going to show you my box of stuff. Grab it. That's a box of crap. Okay, because I am an impatient person and I don't like waiting, I don't want to stop and fix materials to go on a piece. I want my materials ready, right then, right there. So I get things done beforehand. So I'm gonna show you just an assortment of things and, and tell you what I did with them. Okay. This is that fabric I put a picture up on uh, Gigi's. It stretches in this direction. Again, I think it's probably in the wedding informals section where you would just put this maybe on a veil or something i don't know on the outside of a dress but it's it's this it's very uh, iridescent and it's awesome i use it all the time this is what it looks like ah. i use that netting netting is great this is just that uh, i don't know what you call it it's just cheap you can get it at joanna's on a roll on the, what do they call it, the, I don't know. You can tell I don't sew. I use that a lot, different sizes of it. You can paint it. Um, I love this too, the, also at Joanna's. I think this is maybe a lingerie fabric. It doesn't really have a stretch to it. And I may be out of that one, but I'm trying to make another trip to Joanne's, but that's a great one. I always keep my cardboard around. This is what I showed you yesterday. I'm doing the, the paste through the screen. I always try to keep some made up. This is a fabric I also found at Joann's. It intrigued me because of, well, the patterns there. I thought, it oh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be neat? So that's what it looks like right off the bolt. That's the word I was looking for. And this is the bolt. This is it painted. So, it's a great window screen. I actually have an entire row of window screen. It's wonderful stuff. This is Tyvek that I torched. And it's the good soft Tyvek, so it's easy to work with. This is 
What is this stuff? I'll remember in a minute what it is, but it's also torched. You can use it. It's soft, so I can do things with it. I can double it up if I want to. Oh, that, that paper a while ago I was showing you on that piece, this is what it looks like without being painted. You can use doilies. Lace. Always keep my cheesecloth in there. Again, that cheesecloth that I use is the grade 10 because that's the loosest weave. And I have just different nets and screens shoved in there. Um, got this stuff also at the Mulberry and More Paper Place. It is a natural barkish stuff, but I actually pull it apart and use this. I used this too when I was doing those trees. This is just painted strands of yarn, lace, different colors. This is part of uh, saris. I got a box of used saris years ago, and I've shredded a lot of them. They're really neat. This is painted cheesecloth. You do the same thing you do with, with the netting. You just get the stuff in your hands and wad it up and paint it. This is a heavy paper. I don't know why it's in this box, but I don't know where I had that from. Okay, now the stuff here that's that's painted. Um, and if I have scraps or whatever, I put them back in here. This is some more of that stuff that was, I couldn't remember the name of. This is what it looks like painted with the Lumiere paint. This is actually uh, papyrus. So it looks like raw painted. This is, this is a very thin rice paper and I've dribbled either glue or tar gel over, I don't know, and then I painted it. So you can use either side of it. Because it is a paper, it is fragile. Just more of that. This is also a paper that I painted. They just look like and they feel like they ought to be more substantial than they are, but they're really not. Um, so those tea bags I was playing with not long ago to see what they would do uh, painted. So this is just like a gel over them. Oh, this is, what is this? Oh, this is silk. This is silk with the tar gel dribbled over it, and then I just dry brushed on. Uh, I had painted, I think, uh, quinacridone Nicolazzo gold, and then I went over it and dry brushed gold, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So just painted tea bags that I'm somehow ended up in here. Oh my gosh. Another painted paper. Painted papers. When you're doing them, you need to make sure that you paint them on maybe a trash bag or something so you don't have to pick them up and move them. Just paint them and let them dry and peel them off. Painted. And then just miscellaneous papers that are in there, but I don't know why they're in here. Anyway, so I have, this is my stash box. I have more stash boxes. That's by, not by any stretch of the imagination is all that I have. But that's just what happens to be out on the table for me to use immediately right now. So, Okay, that is pretty much what we're going to do today. I'm going to keep doing these videos. Uh, as I get the urge to work on a piece, I'll just lay down a video and it'll be here. And um, I will post some of them over in Looney's Audacious Art Shows over there as well. So hopefully some of those people will come visit us uh, in Juju's. And since I've been messing with those today, I may work a little more on them this afternoon. Or I will save it. Uh, till later on tomorrow or the next day. So if you have questions, just put them in there in the comments and I try to read the comments after I'm done with this. And again, your opinions on the amethyst and the crystals would be greatly appreciated. I, lo I love to get feedback on the pieces. So I, lo I love hearing your comments and your opinions. So please, please share them with me and share your work on Juju's guys. I, sh I don't wanna be the only one putting work on Juju's. 
Uh, it's my group, but it's your group too. So share with me what you're doing and, and how you're doing it. It'll help all of us. Anyway, I'm going to go eat lunch because I'm not freaking starving now. And I will talk to you guys within the next day or two. Have a good one. Bye.